Hey YouTube, this is the first time I'm actually going to be showing anyone the behind the scenes of what my setup looks like. You're going to see what it looks like when I'm streaming using i3 window manager. That is my tiling window manager of choice. My distro that I'm using, my Linux distro is Pop! OS. I use Pop! OS because I have an NVIDIA graphics card and it's supported by a company, which means that it's most likely going to continue to be maintained for a long time. And of course, the NVIDIA graphics support is pretty huge because Linux and NVIDIA historically have not gotten along the best, not the best compatibility. So that is why I use that distro. But today I'm actually going to show you what my desktop looks like, walk you through my i3 config, and you can make your own judgment on whether you want to yoink anything from my i3 config file. If you have any suggestions for things that you use, if you are an i3 window manager, user or if you use a different tiling window manager you have it set up in a different way that you love or you just love your tiling window manager you can let me know it's total nerd space in the comment section and i love to see it so without further ado let me show you what my setup looks like so this is it this is how i have it set up so typically when i'm streaming i actually have it more like this and then i'll have OBS here, I have a browser window here. I typically have Emacs in this upper corner and then a terminal in this lower corner. And that is what it looks like for me when I'm streaming. It looks like this, a little chaotic, a little perfect, honestly, <laughs> perfect for me. So as you can see, I've got my config file open on the side here. Some of the biggest uh, motions I would say that I use is resize. I love being able to resize my windows super easily. Um, to do that, I just have mod R as my combination for that. And my mod key is, it says mod four, that's like the windows key or the super key. So on my keyboard, this one has, uh, this one actually has like a Mac OS layout. So this is my super key. This is the mod four that's getting set in there. With the tiling window manager, you can tile your windows like this. And what's nice is that if I open up any other program uh let's say let's open up uh something low risk oh you know what i could have opened up a i haven't opened up vivaldi in a long time i've got um mod enter is how i open up a new terminal window this is kitty terminal emulator and i'll show you what the shortcut looks like for that but yeah like in this case for example if i wanted to make this a floating window uh, i can do mod shift space and it'll create a floating window. And what's nice is that this will always show above all of my other windows. So this is how I do a Pomodoro is usually I'll have it running in a terminal that's in a floating window like this. And when I've got Twitch chat popped out, when I've got YouTube chat popped out during the stream, I'll typically have those in floating windows over my OBS. And they're usually much smaller than that. And I don't know if you can see from how tiny everything is, okay? It's a 4K monitor, she's a big monitor. You probably can't see a lot of this, but I actually have this really sick plugin that I found that allows you to multi-stream. And so this is kind of my new multi-streaming setup. So I have it where when I start streaming, these are both tied to, they, they kind of sync up with OBS's streaming command. So they will both start by default, but you can also manually start them, manually stop them and control them from here, which is pretty fun. But yeah, that's kind of uh, another feature that I use a lot. So resize, floating windows, also they're all goaded. But in this case, I'm gonna walk you through this setup a little bit. So you guys may or may not know Flameshot. This is one of the open source tools that I cannot get enough of. I've been using it for years. It was recommended to me by another Emacs user back in the day and I have not been able to stop using it since. Flameshot allows you to take screenshots. Um, my computer might like freeze up if I try and demo it for you, but I'm gonna try it anyway and see what happens. Yeah, so it freezes and then I'm able to select a specific area. It allows you to either take a screenshot of the entire display or you can select an area and you can annotate the screenshot before either saving it to a file or copying it to your clipboard or both. So it's really good because if somebody asks you a question or something like that, it's you can have a quick little shortcut. Like in this case, it's um, mod F4 and I just do mod F4, which is super F4 on this PC and 
it opens up the flame shot. I'm able to like screenshot something super quick and I'm able to like highlight specific things. I can do outlines, I can do highlighting, I can add text, all of it. So that is a super convenient tool that I love to use. Um, the rest of this, uh, let's see, this is the font for the window tiles. So this is what's showing up like up top here. I honestly don't know where this came from and I haven't changed it. <laughs> So it's just there. That one is not a custom thing. Um, this, uh, these I also didn't change. These were came by default. These also I didn't change. One gripe that I have with my current i3 setup is I don't have any feedback on how loud my, how loud my audio is going to be. <laughs> so if I like crank it up because I think it's, um, because I think it's like not working or something like that and I crank it up, I have no indication of how loud it's going to be and it goes crazy loud. So just warning. Um, but sometimes I will actually use uh, the GNOME control panel and usually just for audio things. So you can go to like the GNOME control center and um, this gives you your very tried and true familiar little settings window that you're used to if you're used to any kind of using a GNOME desktop. You're probably more used to seeing that as your settings. So you can still access it from your i3 in case you need to. So that is a good thing to know because especially if you're, when you're just getting started, sometimes you're like, bro, where's my UI? I need help. And then you have to like sign out and like it's a whole thing to switch back to GNOME instead of using i3. So you can still access it, don't worry. That is usually how I control my audio and like what is connected and all of that stuff. So that's, yeah, that's how I can tell audio levels and like what device, what input and output devices are being used. Um, okay, so this floating modifier, I don't know if I changed this, but floating modifier mod, um, yeah, I don't know, but basically this means that I can have floating windows and I can click and drag them like this and I can resize them as well. Oh, i3 sensible terminal. I don't know what this, I don't know what this is, but this is how I open my terminal. <laughs> yeah, okay, it is opening kitty. It is opening kitty. Um, there's a chance I have that written out somewhere. Okay, wait, I'm gonna find you. No, that's the only place, don't know. Don't know where that is coming from. But uh, yeah, that's just, if I do super enter, it opens up a new terminal window for me which is very handy. And then, yeah, mod shift Q is how I close any and all windows. Let's see, start D menu. Uh, I actually do have mod D. Oh, here we go. I use Rofi. That's why I use Rofi, not D menu, because apparently Rofi was better. That's what the chat was saying back in the day. So I was like, okay, I'll use Rofi. But, and yet the comment says start D menu. So <laughs> yeah, I, I still did keep the mod D because I just got used to it. I've got support for both um, JKL for focus focusing windows and uh, I also the just arrow keys, which is usually what I end up using is arrow keys. If I had a smaller keyboard then and you don't get arrow keys on those, then maybe that would be different. Um, mod semicolon. Don't know, I never use that. <laughs> I never use that, so. I guess it's just, just there, but I usually just use the uh, cursor keys. Oh, okay, so this move between monitors was more relevant when I had a dual monitor setup. I actually just have a single monitor setup now, so this doesn't really matter so much, but mod O is how I would actually move this whole workspace. So like right now, I don't know if you can see, it's probably so itty bitty, but this is considered a workspace. This is a new workspace. And this little home one that we're in currently is a workspace that has Brave, OBS and Doom Emacs open. So if I hit mod O and I had another monitor hooked up to this PC, then it would be able to switch to that other monitor. And then yeah, this other one, these uh, mod shift J, mod shift K, those were to focus between the different monitors. Yeah, so mod shift is how I like move things around. Another really fun thing, I've been like stacking things more. So you can do either a windowed view like I have now, or I can, uh, hold on. I think these are actually maybe a bit messed up. Okay, we're good. So these by default, 
they all stack vertically like this. But what you can do is if you do, I do mod V, select the window, do mod V, and that basically allows it to collapse and like resize more, like resize vertically if needed. So usually I'll have that active, but one thing I've actually been doing when I'm streaming lately is instead of having only four windows open like this, because sometimes I need access to mul to like different sources and stuff while I'm streaming, or I need to be able to, you know, do things off stream without um, accidentally somehow showing the window or whatever. So you can actually stack these. So these are actually stacked. So now I, I just did mod S and it stacked them. Now, if I do mod E, it goes back to the regular windowed mode. And then if I do mod W, it goes to a tabbed view. So what's cool too, is you can have these nested if you're insane. You can have a tabbed view and one of the tabs has like stacked windows. It's crazy. You can do, you can do so much. Like I really miss having a tiling window manager on my laptop. I had a, my, on my T480, I had i3 window manager installed and it was so good. It was so good because it's so easy to like switch around and like maximize your screen real estate when you're using a tiling window manager like this. But I digress. Yeah. So those are also fun little things that you can do. And yeah, as I mentioned, you can split into horizontal orientation or vertical orientation. So in this case, I don't know, it's only when you're really like, I don't know, I only ever, I only ever use mod A, mod V. I never turn it into horizontal orientation. Okay, so I think if I do that and I do mod H, it's gonna, mod H, mod H. Yeah, okay. I think, I think that makes sense. Yeah, so I just did mod H and then now it's no longer, it's no longer stacking vertically, but now we're gonna reset it to stack vertically. So that's kind of what that looks like. Um, I've never done, I never do the full screen toggle, but dude, wait, that's kind of, that is like, that feels like ultimate focus mode. This is how you know you're locked in is like this full screen toggle. Dude, I never use this, but I'm glad I'm looking through this config file because I haven't looked at it in years and that is helpful. <laughs> That's actually kind of nice. I feel like I've done that unintentionally and forgotten that that combination exists. And then I'm like, how do I get out of this? It's like the first time you're stuck in Vim all over again. All right, so those are, as I said, uh, you can change container layouts. And what's cool, so as you saw as well, I was able to stack these. And when I stacked these, it didn't affect this um, config file, but so I could stack all of them, no problem. And then I can also just move them. I can move some of them out of stacking. Does that make sense? So yeah, anyway, there's a lot of different ways that you can play around with the containers and like how things are being displayed. It's really good. Um, yeah, and then as I said before, I'll do mod shift space. That's how I get the floating window. And if I do that and then I do it again, yeah, it brings it back to full size. We love a good toggle. One, one less thing to have to remember is like the do and undo, make it the same. Um, okay, change focus between tiling and floating windows. Oh, this I don't recall. Dude, we're both just, we're both discovering things. We are all discovering things about my setup today. Yeah, see, I forgot about that. Didn't even know. Uh, focus the parent container is mod A. Ooh, what if I change you to... Oh, it was already... Wait, focus parent container mod A. Let's change you to tabbed. Whoa. 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 Oh my gosh, wait, it's nesting tabs. Wait, this is not good. I don't know how to undo that. Uh-oh. <laughs> Wait, stop. How do I focus the child again? Let me out. That is one thing. I don't know how to like clear these. Whatever, we'll figure it out at one point. Oh, okay. Well, now it's only on one side. So like, look, what have I done here, dude? 
It's okay. We it's cursed. Oh wait, focus child mod D. Maybe I should fix that. I think if I do R, I have an error. Oh yeah, I did not. Oh, FYI, I'm using i3 from 2021. Yup, haven't changed that. Yup, that sounds about right. <laughs> All right, um, we're gonna keep that commented. Anyway, uh, so I gave myself six workspaces to play with. So these will all work uh, up until, yeah, it only works up until six. The other ones just exist. So if you want 10, you can go for it. But I was like, dude, I don't need, I don't need 10. Restart is mod shift R. That's what I just hit. And then it was like, you have an error. If I do mod shift C, it reloads my config file. Uh, yeah, and then this one was uh, exit I3, which is just uh, mod shift E that yeah, exits it out of there. Um. Yeah, so usually this is okay. So this is in resize mode. And as you can see, I define resize mode down here. So when I do mod R, I'm able to you can I don't know if you can see because the text is so little, but you see resize shows up on my um, i3 nav bar, basically my poly bar. Um, you see resize pops up there and then I'm able to use arrow keys and whatnot to uh, resize all my windows. Yeah, and then when I, I usually hit escape and then we're done. Moving on. So this is actually for my poly bar. So I, I don't know if you can see it's so little, you guys. It's so small. Um, but I've got like different workspaces and they show up in Dracula colors. They are Dracula themed. Um, this is kind of scuffed and I've never fixed it. My time is in a white text and the rest of my text is not. It's gray. And then I also have these little buttons at the at the end here. So there's either like lock screen, sign out, or power off. You don't get any confirmation for the record. If you press power off, it is shutting down. It is not going to say, "Are you sure you want to shut down?" It's 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 game over. It's lights out. Okay, so you know. But yeah, that's like pretty much it. It's just customizing the poly bar. I do have a custom poly bar that's just. I guess got all of these little these little icons and stuff. I don't even remember. Dude, I was into rising at the time. I don't even recall. I blacked out. I don't know what's going on. Okay, well, for whatever reason, this is not working anymore. Mod D. Um, it's okay. We'll restart it and see what happens. There we go. Okay, we're good. We're good. Just had to restart it. Uh, this was my attempt to have a wallpaper. And then I realized, like, one, what's the point? Everything's covered by Windows. Also, I, it never worked. So that's just... That's just there. If you have multiple monitors, you're gonna have to do something like this. Workspace one, workspace two, you have to define those and then state like which one is left and which one's right. If I was moving windows around, I wanted to move it to another monitor. It would have to know that when it gets to the right, to the rightmost point in one, in one display that it moves to the next display. You know, that's another direction for that. Uh, yes, and then of course my Doom Emacs setup. So, I found that on my Linux machine, if I do doom run, it basically, it won't run in the background. It like, it takes up a terminal and opens up a program. I have it bound to F1 and it just works. So that's how we do it. And that's it with my i3 config. We can jump into my Emacs config because you guys are probably interested in checking out my Emacs config. Actually, you know what? Let me do that in another video so that it's a little easier for you to see maybe. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I will do another follow-up walking through another part of my setup. And yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. What's your favorite tiling window manager? Have you used a tiling window manager before? Are you gonna use one after I've recommended it so highly? Let me know what you think. Bye.